Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Leading this presentation is the Summer Advising Team of Wofford College. You can find us at advising at wofford.edu, an email address where we receive questions all summer from incoming students as they complete class schedule plans and register, but also as they just look for information about a college. We are a good landing spot. If you're not sure whom to ask questions of, we will be very glad to hear from you and to direct you to the folks who can answer your questions. We're not experts on everyone, but uh, an advisor is supposed to know the resources of a college well, and we believe we can connect you well with the folks that need to be your best resources. My name is Carol Wilson, and at Wofford, I am a professor of English, and I coordinate the first and second year advising program. I'm going to pass on to Dr. Lawton next and let him introduce himself. Hi, I'm Boyce Lawton. I'm the Dean of Student Success, and I work closely with the uh, summer advisors and then help students throughout their four years here. And I'll pass it on to Dr. Baker. Hi. I'm Stephanie Baker. I am a biology professor here at Wofford. I'm currently going into my 16th year as um, a professor here at Wofford with eight years at a different institution prior to that. And I am a major advisor and a general education advisor. So I have a lot of experience with this and I'm looking forward to working with um, parents and students as we go through the summer. And I am Lillian Gonzalez. I am a professor of accounting at the college. I have finished my 21st year on the faculty and have been involved in advising for pretty much all that time, uh, but have been really excited and have enjoyed my work uh, on the summer advising team. Uh, for the, This will be our fourth year, uh, my fourth year doing this, and I've really um, enjoyed it and, and looking forward to getting to know some of you as we uh, move forward. Uh, so I think that's all for the introductions. I'm going to get us started. Uh, during today's Terrier talk, and we're so glad to have you here, we'll focus on making sure that the students' uh, class schedule plans are approved and that students are prepared to register on from July 25th through July 28th. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, it's a very important, though, I want to say this now up front, it's important to remember that until your class schedule plans are approved by us and the students advising holds are released, students will not be able to register for fall classes on those dates, the July 25th and 27th, the two, the two rounds of registration. So we just wanna make sure that everyone keeps that in mind. Uh, in our time together today, we're going to review the guidance that you see here on this, on this slide. Um, and think that these are some of the more important things that, that you will need. Uh, the first thing and a good place to begin today is thinking about communicating with, with us, your, the summer advising team. Between now and registration in, at the end of July, it's essential that students check their wafer.edu email, respond to our emails in a timely way and communicate with us when you have questions and concerns. Uh, write to us, the summer advising team, at advising at wofford.edu when you have questions. So that is definitely an email address that you want to have jotted down someplace convenient. Um, in terms of resources, what are some of the resources that you'll need to successfully prepare a class schedule plan as you get ready for registration? Uh, today, we will point you to the four resources that you see on this slide. The first one, and we'll we'll show you this in, in just a bit, is the first uh, the FYI tab at of my Wofford, um, and there you'll see the new student guide box on that screen um, that you'll find there. And there's all kinds of really useful information that you will be able to use to help. Uh, the student tab of my Wofford will also have all kinds of things that will be useful to you. And then of course your wofford.edu email. We consider that a resource because that gives you access to your information and allows us to answer your questions um, as soon as possible and, um, and get you what you need. The last resource you see there is the fall 2023 interactive schedule. It's an extremely useful resource as you plan for a schedule. It shows you things like uh, class dates, times, prerequisites, the number of seats available at that time, um, and whether it's an appropriate level course for first year students. So that will be another, another item that you will want to make sure that you look at. 
the, the summer registration timeline, we will review that so that you can be aware of some of the important dates and deadlines that, that we have. Um, and we will also hear more about putting your class schedule plan together. Um, and finally, we will hear about registration, which will happen in two rounds on July 25th and July 27th. Um, at the end of the meeting, we will cover a few questions that we've received and then open the chat up for other questions and as time allows. Uh, let's continue to the next slide. This slide that you see uh, provides an overview of sort of where do I start? Remember that the FYI tab is your starting spot for information, and you will see the link for that on the left-hand side of the slide here. You see that the fifth link down. The new student guide um, has drawers in it that take you to important information on the new student information page. When you click the little plus signs, that drawer will open up and you will see other uh, resources uh, that you can use. The July registration link takes you to information you need for the course schedule plan and getting ready for registration. And you see that on the right hand of the slide, uh, side of the slide. The information includes how to create the class plan and how to register for classes once your plan has been approved. Remember, we have to approve them first before you can register. Um, use your wofford.edu email address. We've been saying that because it's really important that that's how you communicate with us. It's linked there in the left margin of each of my Wofford, my Wofford tabs. Um, you'll see it there, the same place where the FYI tab lives. Um, and it's the seventh link down on that on that list. So check that account every day and use it to communicate with us and and advisors when you get here. And um, and we definitely will look forward to being a resource for you um, as you get ready for registration. So now, um, if we will move on to the next slide, we'll take a look at the summer twenty twenty three calendar. Um, as registration approaches, we have to make sure that y'all, you know, you have to keep track of the dates and and the responsibilities. That's going to really be important to make sure that you are prepared for registration. The overview calendar you see here focuses on the registration dates. Um, a more detailed student calendar is on the student checklist of the FYI tab, and you'll see it there is one of the first blocks that you'll see. Be sure to scroll down. And also there's a link there that you can, um, that says printable version of the calendar is printable so that you can have a paper copy for yourself or to share with your family so they know what deadlines you're, you're meeting. Um, if you haven't completed the advising questionnaire, please do so as soon as possible. Um, the summer advising team, we rely on the information you provide to be able to guide you well through this. So please um, fill that out if you have not already. Uh, the class schedule plans, those are due on July 15th. So if you haven't submitted that plan or you need to revise your plan, you should be working on that now uh, in, in the next, what, two weeks, two plus weeks um, to get that in so that we can um, get those approved. So that on July 25th, uh, the first day, the first round of registration at 11 a.m., and that's Eastern Daylight Time, um, you will log in for that first round of registration and you will register for up to five hours of credit. Um, and that typically for students will mean one academic course um, and then plus another course. And usually you would start with the class that matters to you the most. And we can talk more about that later. On July 27th, uh, just before 11 a.m., you will log in again for the second round of registration, and you'll add courses with the goal of having or getting up to between 13 and 16 credit hours. That's where we think that you um, what would have a good schedule in terms of number of courses and credit hours. Um, to talk more about putting this class schedule plan together, I'm going to turn things over now to Dr. Baker. Thank you, Professor Gonzalez. So now we're going to look at um, the class schedule plan. The approval is required for registration in July. So the date to be concerned with here is July 15th. You need to submit it for review by that time. When you're working on this plan, this is going to be your first choice plan. So these are the courses that are your first choice preferences. And it's normally going to include 
LEBA 101 and FYI 101. That's required for all incoming students. We also highly recommend that students include a language that is based on their language placement, and I'll talk more about that on the next slide. Then the rest of the courses should be first year friendly courses, and you'll see that attribute on the, um, on the plan, the interactive schedule. You can see it'll say FYF for first year friendly courses. And finally, make sure that the total number of hours is between 13 and 16 hours. You can use the information in the July registration link of the student guide box to learn more about language placement um, and then submit your class schedule plan. The information here is extensive, so there are lots of links, there's instructions, there are resources, um, there are videos that Dr. Lawton has created to show you how to create your schedule plan and how to check it for errors. If you have questions about the plan, so if you get an error message, for example, please write to us at advising at wofford.edu, again, from your wofford.edu um, email. Um, after you've made your plan and submitted the plan, you need to check your wofford.edu um, email address for a note from one of us. So it'll come from me, Professor Gonzalez, Dr. Lautner, Dr. Wilson, to see if your plan has been approved or if your plan needs updates. So it's really important. This is where communication often breaks down in the summertime is responding to those notes. So if you get a note that says your plan has been approved and your hold's been released, then you're good to go for registration on July 25th. However, if you get a note that says revisions are required, that means that your plan has not been approved, your hold has not been released, and you won't be able to register unless you make um, some revisions to that plan. So please be sure to um, check um, every day. If you have submitted a plan, Dr. Wilson is up to date on those plans, and you should have received a note from her. So if you look through your email and you don't have a note from Dr. Wilson, that might mean there's been a problem with the submission process. So you can go back in and make sure that you have submitted it correctly. Okay, once your advising hold's been released, you're not finished. Okay, even completing the first choice plan, we know it takes a lot of time and it's a schedule that you love and we would love for you to get it, remember that you need to plan for more options. The, the statistically, statistically speaking, the option, uh, you're getting your first plan option is pretty low. So you need to make sure that you have uh, more options. And this is gonna be true no matter where you register at any college, it is often very difficult to get your first um, plan in place. So classes are going to fill because all 500 students are going to be registering at the same time. So you need to have options in case your first choice um, courses fill. Having a plan does not give you priority for seats in a course. As I just said, everybody registers at the same time with equal access to seats. So as we move to the next slide, we'll see that the courses that you're going to register for for the fall, again, are LIBA 101 and FY. I-101. The LIBO 101 emphasizes development of the four key capacities that are essential for students to transition to college, and there are many different topics. So you can go to that interactive schedule and see what the title of the course is, and there's also a place where you can read a little bit about each one, so you can pick the LIBO 101 that best suits you. And then FYI 101, this is a course that is designed to help students transition um, to Wofford and help with the development of the whole person. Again, there are many, many sections of FYI 101. Those are required courses for all first year students. Then the Department of Modern Languages, Literatures and Culture strongly recommends that students register for their language in their first semester. Students are placed in their language course based on their prior experience with the language and their level of academic success in earlier courses. Okay, if you have questions about any of these courses, you can write to um, advising at wofford.edu. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to point out as far as courses on the next slide are the learning communities. And you can read more about that um, at the link listed there. 
This is considered a high impact practice by the American Association of Colleges and Universities. This is an opportunity for incoming students um, to participate in a learning community. The AACU um, is quoted as saying that learning communities have significant educational benefits. If you're interested in a learning community, descriptions are linked in the July registration drawer of the new student guide. Students take two courses together, exploring issues on a multidisciplinary level, and all of the courses will meet general education requirements. So topics include pursuing climate justice with hope and resilience, cultural crossings, intercultural learning, local to global, society and self, exploring social structure and inequity, and theater learning community. And in order to register for these courses, you do need to apply. And there's a link to the application at the new student information um, page under the July registration um, drawer. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Lawton to talk a little bit more about some specific courses. So I wanted to start first by talking about math courses. Uh, and I didn't say in the beginning, I also teach statistics here and sometimes calculus here as well. Um, every student, as part of their general education requirement, has to take a math course while they're at Wofford. The course you take is going to depend a lot on what you want to do after Wofford and what your interests are. So some students are only taking a math course because it's a general education requirement. Other students are taking a math course or multiple math courses because it's a major requirement. So, you know, that would, that would play a, a role in your choice. For Gen Ed, our math department chair has given me a few descriptions of why you would take a specific course. Um, so if you understand, if you want to understand what mathematics is, or you want to learn about the beauty of mathematics, or if you have had a less than stellar experience in mathematics courses in the past, then the college suggests Math 120. And I would, I would push that if you've had a less than stellar experience with math in the past, you want to consider Math 120. Um, it is not as rigorous of a course, um, but it wants to get you excited about mathematics. Pay attention to the major requirements, though, before you make that decision. If you're interested in understanding and analyzing data, then Math 140, which is a statistics course, is a great choice for you. If you're interested in learning how math can be used to model change, like population growth or disease spread or trajectories of falling objects, then either Math 170, which is functions modeling change, or Math 181, Calculus 1, is a good choice. So there are a lot of things you can take for Gen Ed. Considering your major, if you know what major you want to go into, and sometimes I talk to families and students and I say, even if you have no idea what your major is or wants, what you want it to be, you probably have some concept if a STEM major would even be a possibility or if you know you're never going to go there. So kind of think in those broad terms of what I go down this path. So just a few examples. If you are planning to be a math major, the department recommends Math 181 or a subsequent course. So if you're coming in with AP, IB, Cambridge, dual enrollment credit for Math 181 and or Math 182, then you might want to take a, a subsequent course after that. Um, if you do not feel comfortable about Math 181 starting in calculus, then 170 would be a good place to start as a math major to kind of bridge you up to that calculus level. If you're interested in physics as a major, and so that would also include anyone thinking about pre-engineering, um, then you would want to take Physics 141 and Math 181 in the first semester. Those are co-requisite courses. If you have credit for one or, the other, one or the other course, you don't have to take them at the same time, but otherwise you have to be taking them concurrently. So Physics 141 and Math 181, think about that in the first day of registration because you can only register for up to five hours. Physics 141 is a four hour course, Math 181 is a three hour course. And so if you have to register for them both, you're not gonna register for that in the first phase of registration because you can only register for up to five. If you're interested in majoring in biology, um, students usually take Math 140. Sometimes they also take Math 181 in preparation from grad work. Um, but I will say that most of our pre-med students um, re are required to take Math 140 uh, for their work there. If you're majoring in history or government, or English um, or philosophy, you can choose any math to fulfill the gen ed requirement since those majors don't require a math course beyond the college's gen ed requirement. Um, if you have any questions about the requirements or the preparation you need, 
please write us at advising at wofford.edu. Um, we're happy to help. Uh, we know a lot of you as well will not have your AP scores in. Like if you took your AP scores last year, took your test last year and reported those scores, we have those. But if you just took the AP test, you may not have those scores in yet. Um, you can submit your plan with the courses that you are cleared to take, but we will not accept your plan for courses that you don't have the prerequisites for yet, if that makes sense. So if you're planning on taking calculus two, but you don't have a calculus one AP score in yet, go ahead and put calculus one, we'll approve the plan with calculus one, and then you can regroup when the scores come in, which should happen before you register for classes on the 25th. I hope I said that right. Dr. Wilson, I wanna give you a chance to correct anything I just said there. I think it was perfect. The, the main thing is math is one of the things that students are, are interested in and curious about and sometimes a little bit concerned about making sure they get it right or maybe math is the thing they wish they didn't have to take. Write to us and let us give you specific encouragement but also direction. Um, we'll be glad to do that. And we, we students see students at all ranges of the math um, preparation uh, level. And so don't feel bad about asking us. Students are equally worried about, I'm not any good at math as I scored a five on the AP uh, calculus AB exam or BC exam, and I don't know where I should start. So it, it's fine to ask questions and, and try to make sure you have a good placement. Okay, so for additional course selection guidance, um, you want to consult the new student information webpage uh, for first course information by major. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Um, you want to look at the list of required courses and elective options, uh, and then you want to use the interactive schedule as uh, I think Dr. Baker or Professor Gonzalez mentioned earlier, and I'll show you that real quickly as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let me switch over. It's whoa, been a couple years since we did this. I'm going to go here. Back in the days when we all lived in Zoom during COVID. Okay, so I'm on the FY tab, and we mentioned earlier in the presentation the different drawers of information. Everything dealing with your course schedule plan and dealing with registration is in this July drawer. If you haven't noticed already, clicking on the words course schedule plan and clicking on read more take you to different places. Read more is going to give you all the information. Course schedule plan is going to take you to the place where that happens. We're going to go to read more first. And it tells you, here are the required courses and elective options. So you see a good thing, a good list of things you can take. Um, it's going to tell you LIBA 101 course descriptions. And I think Dr. Baker said this, and I just want to really stress this. This is my 27th freshman class at Wofford. There have been years where we had a brand new professor that no one's ever met before. She'd never taught before, so there was no reputational thing. She called her course the power of humor. Back then, we had about 400 students in the freshman class. Now we have 512. 180 students had put the Power of Humor as their first choice liberal arts 101 course. There are only 16 people in that class. Be prepared with backup choices because you're coming to a school like Wofford where we have small classes because you want small classes. Lots of people are going to not get the choice, their first choice course. So just know that you should not just pick one course, pick multiple courses. Okay, so liberal arts 101 course descriptions are there. Your modern language course placement. I'm gonna click this even though it's gonna say you have no placement because you're not a student. So when I do this, it says my modern, place, modern language placement is, for some of you, that's gonna say Spanish 200, the end. For others, it's gonna say you can take Spanish 201 or 303. Um, for others who maybe took American Sign Language only or took Latin only, you're gonna see more things listed there. So your placement will depend on your high school transcript. And then this note underneath is super important. All students can enroll in Arabic 101 or Chinese 101. So just because your placement doesn't list that, it's open to anyone, we would encourage you to take that. Okay, so going on down that list, uh, modern language placement, I think we're good there. I wanna take you over to the housing form, or not the housing form, I wanna take you over, um, where am I? This is when you try to look at too many things at once. July, here I am. Okay, going back to class schedule plan. Um, course recommendations by major. This is a really good thing to look at. So if I think I'm going to be an accounting or finance major, you can't take finance courses in your first semester 
because you have to have the prerequisites of accounting 211 and finance 321, or excuse me, accounting 211 and math 140. So you probably can't take an accounting course in the fall semester because usually those courses are all full about, filled by upperclassmen. And Dr. Uh, Professor Gonzalez, I'm pretty sure all accounting spaces are taken. So don't be planning on taking accounting first semester of college. Math 140 would be a good place to start. So they list that out there. In art history, any 200 level art history course. In biology, and I'll stress this one, either Bio 150 or Chem 123 are good places to start. Many of you are gonna say, I wanna be in Bio 150 and then Bio 150 is gonna fill and you're gonna panic. Don't panic because our curriculum is designed so you can start in either one of those. They're both required for a bio major. So either one of those are a really good place to start. Chemistry gives you a lot of good options and you may wanna take, well, you wouldn't take all of those, but you may wanna take two of those or you may just wanna take one of those. Um, but one of those things will get you started on the right path. And then you just kind of follow your way through. Um, with English, you can't take an English course in your first semester because every student takes LIBA 101 in their first semester. Um, and there's always maybe an exception to every rule, but, but our goal is that you're taking LIBA 101 in your first semester. So look through those, see what's there. Um, if you've never taken Arabic before and you want to um, or remember taking Chinese before and you want to major in Chinese, you need to take Chinese 101 your first semester. That's kind of a, a, a given there. Okay, so going back, I see the course recommendations by major. The interactive course schedule, I'll show you another way to find this in a second. This is a beautiful tool. What I would do before you start your search to make your course schedule plan at all, the first thing I want to look at I don't need to be getting disappointed because I'm looking at courses where no seats are available. So I go ahead and click available, yes. You don't need to be looking at any courses that aren't appropriate for first year students. So go ahead and click first year friendly. So when you start looking at classes, you're only looking at first year friendly courses and you're only looking at courses that have seats available as of now. And again, as of now doesn't mean they'll be available at 11.02 on July 25th, but as of now, they're okay to put in your plan. You can filter through things really easy. If I know that I'm really, really want to take a, I'm just flying down here, history course, and I've got four courses on my plan and I only have, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes, maybe I really only want to look for Tuesday, Thursday classes that are left. This is a nice dream. Your schedule won't always be pretty, um, but I can narrow it down that quickly and say, show me first year friendly courses with seats that are available that meet on Tuesday, Thursday. That's pretty easy. When you are working through this on registration day, and I know we're not talking about that today, this course has to, there, this page needs to be refreshed. So it doesn't auto refresh. If you try something and the course is full, you're going to hit refresh and then it'll start open again. So it'll, it'll update every time you update. It refreshes itself about once every minute because I'm uptight and paranoid. I always look at the update date. And so my, my screen says it's 4.30. During registration, this should update about every single, every 60 seconds. So it'll be very current, but that's a good way to say, oh, did I forget to hit the refresh button? Okay, so going back, we've got that. Class schedule plan instructions, a lot of good information here. It'll tell you exactly what to do, make sure you submit. Um, then the video, um, they laughed and said, I made the video, I switched over so I don't have to listen to myself. You'll hear an artificial intelligence voice speaking to you, which hopefully is a little more clear than my Southern accent. Um, but that'll lead you through every single step, piece by piece by piece. I wanna give you very, very quick highlights of that right now. So I'm gonna go back to my.wafer.edu. I wanna to go to the FY tab. Well, I was on the FY tab. I wanna to go to the student tab to do this. I make my course schedule plan this way because this is what you'll do every semester for the next four years if you go through this, this path. So I'm going to hit the registration link. That's going to bring me up to this page um, where I'll see prepare for registration, plan ahead, register for classes. You're going to want to go to the plan ahead screen. I have to work in a fake environment, so I'm going to go over here. So this is, this is not the real thing. This is, this is mocked up for this purpose. So I'm going to go to plan ahead. If I haven't seen fall 23, fall 2023, I want to click on that, hit continue, and then I want to make a new plan. And I'm just going to build one or two courses quickly. I would build my plan or build the courses on my plan 
by looking at the interactive schedule first. So I would come here and say, I think I wanna take PIM 123. Um, and so I'm gonna find a section that looks good. Say, I, my favorite time to study is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1030. So if you look over here, it lists the CRNs, the course registration numbers. Really important, um, a thing that we see as a common error is that students don't understand that the course and the lab go together. And then super important, they have the same letter. So if you're taking section C, you have to take lab CL. If you take section B, you have to take lab BL. And you have to register for those at the same time. Like you can't register for one without the other because it's gonna give you a linked course error. So let's say I'm gonna put section B into my, section, into my schedule. I'm gonna go 9194 and 9195. That's where I'm headed. Go into the plan, I'll find it this way. File, no, chemistry. Chemistry, and I can type in chem. I'm gonna put in 123. Do not hit add course. The video I have the person screaming at you saying this, do not ever do this. This looks into the schedule and says, yeah, Latin 101 is on our schedule, but we don't actually teach Latin anymore. Or Latin 101's in our catalog, but we don't teach Latin anymore. So you can see courses in here um, and think you're putting that on your schedule, but we have no plans to offer that course. So that's only looking at the catalog, don't go there. Always hit view sections. These are sections that are actually on the schedule. So I'm gonna go with section B. I'm gonna add section B right here. And this says general chemistry, four hours of credit, section B. There's that CRN that I had been looking at. It meets Tuesday and Thursday from 1 p.m. until 2.20 p.m. Linked means it is linked with the lab course. You have to take these two together. And if you are unsure for any reason, you could just hit view linked and it will tell me it's linked with BL, okay? Um, if I wanted to know more information, I could click on the name of the section and I could see all kind of stuff, including that in the attributes is first year friendly. There are no restrictions on the course. Um, I could read the course description, which on the interactive course schedule, I didn't mention this, if I hover over the title, it gives me the whole description. If I hover over a category that I don't realize what it is, it doesn't tell me first year friendly. I can figure out first year friendly there. If there were any restrictions, I could see that as well. So I like the interactive schedule for, for that reason. Okay, so back in here, I can see any of that, but when I'm ready, all I do is say section B, I'm gonna add it. BL, I'm gonna add it. And then I'm gonna save my plan, give it a name. I'm gonna call mine fall 2023, save it. And now I've started my course class schedule plan. I would go back time and time again until I had built out my entire class schedule plan. I'm gonna throw in something. And again, I'm looking at a mock system, which is not the same courses that you're looking at, but you'll get an idea. In here, you see in my first section of Liberal Arts 101, section A, it looks great. I love the title, Theater of War. I like the place. I like the time. I like the teacher. It has 16 of 16 seats available. I try to add it and I'm going to get an error on my plan because it says the attribute is it's a learning community. And if I went in and looked at restrictions, um, it's got an instructor permission, permission on there. So we'll see a lot of students say it keeps telling me I need instructor permission. What's going on? Often that is um, learning communities with instructor permission. If I had looked at that here, so LIBA 101, we put the learning communities at the top, instructor permission, instructor permission, instructor permission, and they all have the learning community tab. I would love for you to be in a learning community. I run that program, but you got to apply first uh, and you can easily find the learning community application on there. So apply and then, then we would make sure that you got in there. Okay, so I'm going to add a Liba section, hit save. You see when I do this, as soon as I hit save, they went from being green to being filled in with colors. This is a nice way to make sure that my plan, I don't have courses on top of each other. Um, it looks balanced. You're gonna try to schedule a balanced plan. Reality is your first year in college, your schedule might be awful in terms of time of day that you go. Do not fall into the trap of saying, I don't want any eight o'clock classes. You've had eight o'clock classes for the last 13 years since kindergarten. You will have eight o'clock class when you go to work in the real world. 
you're really limiting yourself if you try to block those out. So it's like, just plan, get better sleep, do okay, be good that way. When I've done that, I pretend I've built all my classes out. I want to go back to the FY tab. And this is where almost everybody, well, where most of our students make a mistake. You have created a class schedule plan. The four of us who are the summer advisors have no idea that you've done that unless you go to schedule plan is ready for review. You're looking down, you can see if there are any errors on the plan. So this is, this is another pretend plan because of what we're doing. So I would, after I saw that there were no errors visible, then I would hit my schedule plan is ready for you. And I think for y'all, the my schedule plan is ready button doesn't appear if you have errors, right? So you have to clear those out before you do it. When you hit that button, then your course schedule plan appears on our maintenance screen. And that's when we know to go review your plan and tell you that it looks great or that you had signed up for Math 120 and you told us in your advising questionnaire that you wanted to be a math major. And so we have to say, oh, we need to talk about this because this isn't a good match for the goals you told us you had. Um, and so that's, that's where that comes in. But this button is the one where most people miss. Um, so when you're done with your plan, go back to FY. when you're done with your plan, you want to make sure you go to my schedule plan is ready for view, go to the bottom, submit it, and then we know we're good from there. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing, I think for good, get back to Uh, yeah, Mary Carmen. Said, okay, so we've done the submit. Um, the next thing that we get, like our biggest problem every year, is we know that no one 18 years old likes email. We get that. College works on email and work works on email. You have got to check your Wofford email address every day. You do not want to be stuck where the 25th comes and you've never noticed that we told you six weeks ago that you needed to make a simple change and you didn't make it because the system will not let you register until one of the four of us removes your advising hold. That's what we're trying really hard. Um, and if Dr. Wilson hadn't already said it, we're caught up. And so if you think you finished it and you haven't heard from us, that means you didn't press submit um, or, you know, or, or you've submitted it and we told you there needed to be a change and you haven't, you haven't made that change. So look at Wofford email all the time. Okay, a couple common error messages and then you're done with me for the day. Um, Things that usually show up as errors. If you get a missing CRN message, that means that instead of view sections, you viewed the course or added the course. So you might have said, hey, I want to take Bio 150, but you didn't actually tell us what section of Bio 150 you had. So if you see a missing CRN, know that that means you need to take that off your schedule or off your plan, go back, view sections, and show us which section of 150 you need. Missing link course, that is generally um, a science course almost always. Um, and so you have registered for uh, Bio 150, but you didn't register, or you registered for, bio, you planned for Bio 150B, but you didn't plan for Bio 150B lab. You might get multiple errors if you plan for Bio 150B and Bio 150A lab. Now it's gonna say you have two courses where the link is missing and it's gonna get confused. So just make sure those lab and lectures match. Instructor permission for a language. Um, and so um, if you have a language error course, that means you have registered or you have planned for a course that is not in your language placement list. Uh, I'm gonna say for the sake of time, go back and read the language placement policy. If you took a language and you want to go into another language, then we have, an, we have a form available for that under the um, language change request form. Learning community selected without application. That's pretty obvious. If you see that, go apply for the learning community. If that's what you want, go apply for the learning community. And again, I would love for you to be in a learning community. Prerequisite course needed. That could mean that you signed up for um, Math 182, Calculus 2, but we don't know about any credit that you have for Calculus 1. It could be you're waiting on your AP scores to come in. Go ahead and register, go ahead and plan for, for calculus one and then change your plan after we've approved it if those AP scores come in. It could be that you took calculus one in high school, you got dual enrollment credit for it from a from a local college. You've got to make sure that you send our trans send us your transcripts. Um, and you can do that electronically. Um, most every college has electronic transcript orders now. So we'll get it very quickly, but you've got to do that. 
time conflicts. Um, I never quite know if your, your age group read um, Harry Potter or not. Hermione Granger is the only person in the world who could go to two classes at the same time. You cannot. So a time conflict says exactly that. These classes overlap. Even if by five minutes they overlap, you can't do both of them. You need to pick another class, change your plan. Capacity error. This is one that students, sometimes we think you're just not, you're not wanting to believe what it says. We want your classes to be smaller. We do not have any 400 person classes like you would have at a large state institution or a large research institution. If the class is full, the class is full, move on in the planning stage. Um, for example, my statistics class in the fall is full. You cannot put it on your play, plan because I have a whole bunch of upper class students who've already filled up all the seats in the room. And often it is all the seats in the room are filled. People aren't being ugly. Um, there's just no more room for you to sit. If you have any questions with these, write us of advising at wofford.edu. You've heard us all, we're friendly, we're nice. I hope we're not scary uh, and we wanna help. Okay, so now I'm gonna pass it on. Um, and I think Dr. Wilson is coming in next. Thank you, Dr. Lawton. I also think I need the t-shirt that says, I hope I'm not scary. I think that's the good one for the for the rest of the summer. Um, Y'all, I, I get the privilege, one, of working with these wonderful people and um, their extraordinary resources for you and for me. My other, my other happiness today is that I get to look a little bit ahead with you just to remind you that registration is coming up July 25th and 27th. We are going to have another Terrier Talk on July 11th at 4 p.m. and we're going to offer their more specific tips for registration. We hope you'll come. We hope you will recommend that your friends come because we'll give you some of the, the practicalities that you will need. But right now you need to know that round one of registration begins on July 25th, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time and that the second round will begin on July 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You'll register for up to five hours in the first round and complete your schedule in the second one. The first round, people often write and say, which one, which course should I prioritize? And we do have some situations that it's really good to think about, okay, uh, I've got a priority I need to, to meet. For example, if you are a student athlete, whose team has preferred lab days, then we recommend that you talk to your coach and ask when your, your lab days are for, for your specific team. And then make sure that on the first day, July 25th, you register for the lecture and the lab for your science. Science courses fill quickly at Wofford and that's your best opportunity for finding a seat in a course that meets that schedule. If you're my, my second point is if you're interested in a science major, it's sort of the same thing. We have a lot of students pursuing science. And so if you have a particular time or a particular course that you want, then registering for it on July 25th is a really good decision. Um, the third option is some of us just go through the schedule and we find the thing that we really want. Um, I've, I've I'm smiling, remembering all of those LIBA course descriptions. Some people just latch on to one and go, that's the one, that's the one I want to take. And as Dr. Lawton pointed out, even with so many options, it doesn't always work. But if you want to prioritize it for July 25th, that's your best chance for getting it as your first choice as you go through. Um, as we look ahead, we want you to be sure that you plan for optional courses. We understand that we've said all, several things multiple times today. Submit your plan, submit your plan, check your email, check your email, plan ahead, plan ahead. It's because we know that these things matter and that not taking that advice seriously causes folks anxiety that they don't need to have. Everyone registers and gets seats that are appropriate for them. But we would like for this to be a smooth experience. And that happens when it is an experience that's based on your having knowledge. And some of that knowledge is about the good stuff. And some of that knowledge is about, oh, shoot, I'm the one whose favorite LIBA filled up. Yes, you are. Keep moving. Go through the rest. And oh, just one last thing that's sort of a smile for me as I think about LIBA. I remember um, emailing with a student once and I sent the link to the LIBA courses and they came back and said, 
I got tired reading all those descriptions and I thought, oh my, in college, you're going to read so much more than those Lima descriptions. But I said, start at the bottom, start in the middle. Because if everybody stops at the Libra class that is number 10, then they're scrambling on, on um, registration day trying to find another one. So I'll recommend read them all because after all, I'm an English professor. Mayor Carmen, can you move us to our next slide, if you will? Because basically, I'm here to sum up saying that um, we want you to follow the directions for creating that class schedule plan. We want you to join us on July 11th for keys to a successful registration at 4 p.m. We really want you to write to us at advising at wofford.edu. And we really want you to check your, your Wofford email today. We are glad that you are here. And um, Mayor Carmen, I'll get you maybe to check and see if we have questions in the chat or if there are other things we might need to consider right now. Uh, there is one question that just came into the chat, if anybody wants to take that one. I'd love to. Um, and so the question is, uh, we are curious why registration has two parts. How are registration times decided for each student? Will dual enrollment, it says requirements, but I think that means classes show up in degree works once they are processed. So the first one, why is registration uh, in two parts? So many people have cried and screamed and honestly texted me death threats over the years when, when registration didn't work out well for them. Our registrar borrowed this idea from another unnamed school. The idea is that when we split it in two, the first phase of registration, pretty much everybody's able to get a first choice class, right? May not be a first choice section, of LIBA 101, they're able to get a course that they wanted to go into. They wanted, they really, really, really wanted to take Chem 123 their first semester. If they pick that course the first day, they have a really good chance of getting it. Um, it balances things out. We found a lot of students had perfect schedules when we did it all at once. And then a whole lot of students that maybe registered two minutes later had all their classes on Tuesday, Thursday. So this allows us to, to give everybody a fighting chance to have more of something that they want in there. Um, how are registration times decided for each student? We're a small school, it's all in. So every single incoming student, all 512 students register at 11 a.m. Eastern time on July 25th for up to five hours. And every single one registers for up to 16 hours uh, on July 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So there's no discrimination there. After that, it's based on credit hours earned, you know, in the in following semesters, but it's all in this time. Will dual enrollment requirements show up in degree works once they are processed? Absolutely. And so when the um, registrar's office gets those transcripts and they put them in, uh, then it will show up in degree works. Uh, for me, I assume it so works this way for the students. There's a button at the top of the page that I can hit refresh. Um, so degree works updates every evening. But if you think the registrar just put it in an hour ago, you can hit the refresh button at the top of the screen, not to refresh the web page, but there's a little refresh button within degree works and it'll show up automatically there. And it will say my um, Chinese 101 requirement has been satisfied because I took Chinese 101 at Greenville Technical College in Greenville, South Carolina. And it, and it all flows through beautifully that way. Mary Carmen, I see a question about the schedule plan being updated once AP scores come in. Yeah. Um, yes, um, your planning does not have to wait until your AP scores come in. Write to us if you'd like to know, okay, if I get credit for this class, what's the next one that I should take? But submit a plan that's appropriate for you now. With that submission, when we release your advising hold, we are confident you have explain to us that you can create a plan, that you know the rules, you know how to link courses, you know how to check for capacity, all of those things that are skills in, in registration. And so if we have released your advising hold and have approved a plan, if your AP scores come in or your IB or Cambridge, or if you have a, a late transcript coming in, let's, let's not have that happen. But if it does, that's okay. As long as the credits are recorded, then you can update your, your schedule and plan for different courses based on your current situation. You can certainly write to us at advising at wofford.edu and we'll be glad to make sure that you're, you're working within the prerequisites and the requirements that are, are best for you. And I'll, I'll add to that because I have two sons in college with a lot of AP credit and this was a big scary time for us of like, what's gonna happen with registration? What are we doing? How will we know? 
we receive all of your AP scores electronically. Um, they are automatically dumped into a, a holding place for us that our system goes and looks for them every night. And so we will get all of your AP scores on the same day at the same time. Um, it will be the day of or the day before they're released to you nationally. Sometimes they send them to us before they send them to you, but we'll get them all right around then. Our system will process all of them. And then the next day, that day or the next day, our system will send out an email to everyone saying, you've received AP credit for these courses. And so you'll know, I mean, we won't even have to go into degree works to look or anywhere. It'll show up in your inbox of like, we've got all this stuff. If you go over 24 hours, then I'll be writing you and seeing how do we pick the ones that you want to take. Mayor Corman, I also see that um, a question about IB credits. Um, did I get it correct that only IB HL classes receive credit, not SL uh, classes? That is correct. And if you would like the link to the table for AP or IB credits, you can email us at advising at wofford.edu or you can Google. AP, IB, Wofford College, and links will show up. Google takes you there pretty quickly. And there's, um, yes. Uh, there's also a couple, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss one um, right above the question about IB classes. Um, mm, let me For clear. Yeah, it's, I can just read it out. For clarification, it seems the schedule plan is more to approve classes. However, the rest is knowing how to navigate the system, but stick with courses approved. Um, that's a really good one. Thank you for catching that one, Mary Carmen. I was already moving down to a different question. Um, that's really important. The schedule that you create is your first choice schedule. And you do not have to stick with it beyond the required courses. You need to have a LIBA 101 in your schedule when you're finished with registration. You need to have FYI 101 in your schedule when you complete registration. We strongly recommend go ahead and take your language at this point. So those are the things we're going to be scanning for and looking for. But the sections may change even there from your original plan. And you may have thought, hey, I'm going to take a religion 263. But if it fills or something else comes up, you may take something else. You do not have to stay with the original courses. And that's because we are confident that you know how to create a plan. You've used all of the resources here and you can plan ahead to have well, my phrasing is always planned for disappointment. Make sure that you know that you can make some changes. Um, my, I'll ask my colleagues, is that clear? Does that that set how how we set this? Let's see, Professor Gonzalez nodding. And yeah, I wanted to add one caveat because I'm that guy and I have those children. If you think I'm just not going to follow that advice, I'm just not going to register for a LIBA course and I'm not going to register for an FYI course. I'm the data guy that comes through. You, you picked a small school because you want good advice. I go through and I run queries at the end of the second phase of registration. If you didn't register for a LIBA course, I'm going to drop one of your classes and put you in a LIBA course because that's a requirement. If you didn't register for an FYI course, I'm going to alter your schedule however I need to to get you into an FYI course because that's a requirement. There will be some people who can't figure it out and I'll, I'll work with you, but like whether or not you actively put one in, there's going to be a LIBA 101 course and an FY 101 course on your schedule by the time you arrive on campus because you have to do that. Um, and so don't, don't think, well, this applies to everybody but me. And I say that in a loving, caring way, I hope. But um, just, just put that out there. Don't cheat the system. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, Dr. Lawton does not say anything that's not in a loving and caring way. <laughs> I'm sure you of that. Tandler, you are my favorite as I'm going through the chat because you have probably saved me 20 emails of, uh, in here. Um, Tandler's asked, can I count, can one class count toward the cultures and people's requirement and the religion or philosophy or social science requirement? In the schedule, you'll see sometimes it has CP, which stands for cultures and peoples, next to, then it's also a religion class. A course can count for one general education requirement. You get to choose which one it counts for. It'll, it'll slot into degree works in what seems the most logical. A religion course will count, look like at first like it counts for religion. But if later you wanted that course, if it is designated cultures and peoples, then you can make that change. And But you can't fulfill one general education requirement. I mean, 
two general education requirements with one course. I'm going to say that again. You cannot fulfill two requirements with one course. It's one course, one requirement. But if that course is required for gen ed and your major, that will absolutely be okay. Oh, yeah. We say you can't double double dip in gen ed. That's that's right. what we always tell people. Yeah. Um, Will the system look for the IB scores just like AP? Those will arrive and they will show up in your in your transcript and therefore in your degree works the same way when they are when they are processed. Um, I'm looking to see. Dr. Wilson. Yeah, please. There was a, also a question here. Do you recommend prioritizing gen eds or major requirements? Right. Um I can answer that one. Um, that really depends on what this what the student wants. If there's a gen ed that they really, really, really want and they think it's going to be popular, then they can prioritize that. However, if they're in um, really, really want to get that first course in a major, then they should prioritize that. So that is really student specific on uh, which type of course they're going to prioritize. And some people come in with the mindset that they want to get all their gen eds quote, out of the way in their first two years. I was math and physics. I didn't want to take all math and physics classes my senior year. I balanced mine out. So I mean, even that choice of long term, you make that decision as to what's best for you. Just like I think if I were an English major, I don't think I could handle taking all upper level English classes my senior year because I might not have enough time in the day to read. Um, and so I might want to balance out some other things in, in there. I'm, I'm seeing Lily Kate's question about information about what sort of sciences or other classes we should be taking um, your first year. The, the courses that you take in your first year, they're, they're the, two require, the, the two required ones, the LIBA and the FYI 101. The language is the other strongly encouraged course. That leaves two courses left. And so if you're going to major in a science, um, for most of them, beginning the science in the first semester is a good idea. But if you write to us at advising at wofford.edu, or if you explore the July drawer in the FYI tab, you're going to see links to general education requirements, suggested courses for majors, but also electives, which are free choice courses that may allow you to explore a major or other courses that are of interest to you. And so write to us if you have specific questions, but yes, there, there are suggestions there. As you use the interactive schedule, any course that's marked FYF, first year friendly, as long as it doesn't have instructor permission or a prerequisite, which means you need to take a course before you take it, the college has deemed appropriate for an incoming student. And that feels a little bit scary some days of like, but you mean I'm just choosing. Yes, you are. You can read the course descriptions. You can write to us and ask for some guidance. We're not going to tell you what course to take because we that's not our job but we'll do our best to give you the information you need so that you can choose well heather asked after our plan is approved what happens if when we register the class is full and i will say that will happen for 90 percent of you for at least one of the courses in your plan so that's a great question how will we know what backup courses are appropriate that's where you want to work. You, you can ask us at advising at wofford.edu, but you can also look through the things that we have suggested as appropriate first courses in the major or as electives um, or gen ed requirements. You want to keep going back to that interactive course schedule and seeing what's available at the time. Um, one of my children, I was really pleased with him. He knew he had to have a particular course. He goes to a large school and he wrote down the CRNs for all 30 sections that were being offered. And I said, don't you want to put the times in here? And he said, I don't care if it's at 10 o'clock at night. I want that course. And so he put every single one in until he finally got one that worked. And I'm like, that's a good attitude. You know, and he did. He had, he, we don't offer that many evening classes, but he had a lot of evening classes, but it worked well for him. So like, know that maybe you wanted to take philosophy your first semester, but religion might be just as good or history might be just as good. All of those are fulfilling age in it requirement. Um, and so that would be good. Maybe I was going to be a bio major and I wanted to take bio, but Kim is a great choice that's selected by the department. And so that's good too. Um, I'm going to hit the next one just because on that biochem thing, someone asked if you're a science major in bio or chemistry, is it okay to take the lab in the spring instead of the first semester? I can interpret this question two ways. 
Um, if you take the Bio 150 lecture, you have to take the lab at the same time. The system will not let you register for one without the other. Same thing for Chemistry 123 and Physics 141. Um, and so for most of the Environmental Science 150, um, most of those would be, if, if that's what your question is, fine. If you're a science major, if you're saying, do I have to take a lab course my first semester? Dr. Baker, you answer that part. <laughs> um, I think there it's going to depend on what the major is. Um, for biology, no. You, As Dr. Lawton's already alluded to, you could take chemistry 123 if biology 150 fills up. For chemistry and physics, I think it's a little more important that you do start in that first semester. So it does depend um, on what the science major is. Um, Professor Gonzalez, I'm going to frame this question and ask you to answer it if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll put you on the hot seat. So the only required classes are LIBA and FYI. And then the second part of the question is, I don't have to do math or a language. How, how would you explain that, Professor Gonzalez? <laughs> Welcome. Well, in terms of the math, um, I would say really look at, because math is a good course to have that first semester, I would look at the requirements of majors you're considering, because that might be a prerequisite. Like, for instance, in accounting, uh, Math 140 statistics is a prerequisite course for the major um, and for a, a couple of the classes in the major. So not having the math might delay you exploring some of the classes within the accounting and finance major. Um, so I would say, you know, don't let fear of math. We've got some fantastic professors here, very supportive and, and lots of um, resources to help you through. Um, don't, don't be dissuaded, especially if it's important for your major. So I would say, consider that. And also um, for the language side, Language, I know, can be very scary, can be very intimidating, but we once again have a phenomenal faculty um, and they are very supportive and are not interested in seeing anyone not succeed. And so they offer lots of support there too. Um, I would say that while you may think you want to push off the language up to a, a future semester, um, the language department, they reserve sort of spots in their classes for first year students um, and make no guarantees that you will get into those classes that you may be interested in later. Um, so you might find yourself um, spring semester of your senior year uh, needing to take Spanish 101. Um, and that has happened. I've had students do that and never have they been pleased with their decision to do that. <laughs> Um, so I would say, you know, again, don't don't be scared to go ahead and, and take that. And also that it might open up. You might find yourself really enjoying the language and study abroad becomes an option. There are a lot of really good things could could come from that. Um, so so I would say while seats are being reserved for you um, as an incoming class and um, having options for not just the the class, but the sections that now is a really good time to take the class. Did I did I cover that okay, Dr. I Wilson? I think you covered it well. Y'all, um, the, the question asker was, was right. LIBA and FYI are the two required courses. Math has to be taken and you have to have credit for it sometime before you graduate, at least one course. You have to have credit for a language sometime before you graduate. And so the, the timing of that can be up to you. Professor Gonzalez made a really good point about prerequisite courses and exploring. She made another excellent point about the language courses being having priority registration for incoming students right now. But you are the decision maker in creating your schedule. Um, you'll do well to get advice from advisors and then put that together with your thinking and your understanding of your needs. I promise you will tell you if you are doing something that is going to keep you from graduating. But sometimes things are inconvenient or difficult, and we'll do our best to try to make sure that you can understand those as well. All right, one more quick question before we jump off. Can your study abroad count for your language requirement? No. 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 Okay. And can abroad interim courses count towards requirements or just electives? When a faculty member proposes an interim, most of the time it is not going to count for any general education requirements. 
every now and then an interim has counted. That's a special process and it is described um, carefully in the course description. Those, those interims are, are graded. And uh, in my memory, I don't remember a study abroad when counting for a general education requirement here. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I'm remembering it correctly, but I will tell you that generally interim counts for interim credit and students need to complete need to pass for interims to graduate from Wofford College and so the others um you you want to get the other courses you'll get them during your spring or your fall semester all right Looks like we've made it through the questions in the chat. Um, I would like to thank everyone who joined the call today. Um, any last words from, from our advising folks? I wanted to say real quickly, don't be in an utter panic if things don't go well. Um, one of the things that I spend the last month on between registration and when you arrive, I'm mining every schedule from a data standpoint to make sure that things look okay. And if they don't look okay, one of us is gonna reach out to you and, and try to make sure it helps. It doesn't mean if you had your heart set on Bio 150 that we can create a desk in that room that doesn't have one, but it does mean that we're gonna make sure you stay on track to the major you hope to get for, because our goal is to get you out of here in four years. Um, and so just know that you aren't alone in this process. There will be a lot of gnashing of teeth on the 27th. Some of you will cry on the 27th. Some of you will throw things. That will happen with every one of your friends and every college across America. Um, and then it's our, you know, we take a lot of pride in making sure we can get things working out so that you get a schedule that works, even though it may not be your first choice. Okay, well, I think that that is um, the, all that we had on the schedule for today. Um, the recording of this Terrier Talk will be sent out tomorrow morning. Um, it will also be on your FYI portal. Um, remember that advising at wafford.edu is a holy grail email there <laughs> um, and to be checking your Wofford emails. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you at the next Terrier Talk.